All right, so yeah, I'm jo I'm Joe Bowser. I'm uh, currently the uh, lead for uh, Android on Cordova. Uh, if I closed a bug because for some reason, sorry, <laughs> but um, I'm here to actually talk about WebVR and Cordova and the state of WebVR in 2017 and how we fit or don't fit into it, as it were. So, so virtual reality. Uh, yeah, this is an example of uh, a VR app uh, on the Vive where, you know, this is another example. Oh, come on. Okay, uh, vir web VR, ah, that's actually. So virtual reality, there's a bunch of headsets. Uh, who heard about the Google uh, I.O. announcement of the new Daydream headset? Show of hands. Okay, a few of you, good. Um, there's the Vive, the PlayStation VR, and there's all these different platforms for VR. Um, sort, of, sort of a similar story to how mobile originally came about, how there were a million platforms, like there was Android, iOS, Blackberry, Symbian, you know, some, some, some survived, some died. And same thing, there's still installs, there's still gatekeepers, you know, there's, a, there's now a Daydream store and an Oculus store. So like how there's the App Store and Google Play. And a lot of it's closed. Like the majority of VR work isn't even done with native frameworks. It's actually done with, with uh, some open engines like the Unreal Game Engine or with Unity, which is you know, 125 a seat the last time I checked for like the commercial one where you don't have the personal edition screenshot. So that's where WebVR fits in. WebVR is open, connected, and instant. So it's open as in, it's an open spec that browsers are adopting slowly. Um, and, it's, and it's instant as you just, go to a, you just go to a site and you just click enter VR and you're in. Um, but it still has the same discoverability problem as, as mobile web apps, as in they're not in the store. They're not quite first class citizens. So, there's first the eight browser APIs that, are, that enable WebGL, and, they're, and the spec is available at this URL, w3c.github.io slash webvr. And then there's, of course, WebVR Rocks, which has the ever so familiar uh, graph matrix of compatibility, where Firefox and Nightly support it. Chrome for Android has it as of Chrome 58. Really, you probably, well, technically Chrome 56, but you probably want to go Chrome 58 because not all the frameworks work right with it. Oculus Carmel has it, um, which you can only get on the Samsung Gear VR. Samsung Internet sort of has it, but not really. It doesn't actually immerse you. Uh, and of course, the mobile polyfill, uh, which works on everything. Uh, and everyone got one of these, right? Yeah. Cool. Uh, if you have it set up, awesome you can uh, check out the demo. So, and that'll take you to the metaverse. But here's the big problem without a framework for uh, WebVR experiences. Uh, first, WebVR stuff is based on WebGL. And um, if you do raw WebGL, you're basically sort of writing this C code in JavaScript. So someone created an abstraction of that. Mr. Dube created 3.js. But that's for WebGL, it's not for WebVR, so it doesn't handle displays, it doesn't handle stereoscopic stuff, and it, there's a whole bunch of things in WebGL that you have to deal with. Like, you have to make sure you have the WebVR polyfill, that's a fact of life, especially if you're trying to get it to work on iOS, set up the camera, your lights, your models, make sure you have the right version of three, um, and deal with all sorts of meta tags and, and all sorts of things that People don't have time for. So there's two real solutions for this. The one I think is better, this is my own personal opinion, and it's the one that's getting the most traction. If you go to WebVR Experiments on, uh, on uh, Google's um, site where they're showcasing WebVR is A-Frame. And it's a web framework that's declarative for building virtual reality experiences. Um, yeah, this is basically their hello world. Just a bunch of custom tags. Uh, there's a scene, there's a box, a cylinder, a sphere, a plane, and the sky. And the sky is gray in their world. And 
And then there's this, which is Hello Metaverse, which you can embed directly into the screen and go full screen and view it. No, that's nice. And uh, it works, it, they claim it works with everything. Now, I haven't tried it with everything, but I got it to work with Cordova, so it works with Cordova. <laughs> and it has a really robust community. It's backed by Mozilla. So there's 125 contributors, 5,000 star, I'm a stargazer. Um, 3,000 members on Slack, and hundreds of featured projects. And then there's React VR, which is backed by Facebook. It has a ton of hype. Uh, React VR is based on React. It's, you know. So it's Hello World is a lot more verbose. So you have your class, you have your markup inside your code, your view. This is just doing a 360 photo of Chess World, whole bunch of style. And this is just for their Hello World, which looks like that. Um, it's very early beta. I don't have a working demo of this here because it doesn't work with my antivirus because I can't change the port. And there's no documentation on how to change the port. And it's an open issue on their uh, bug tracker. So I wish I could show you more, but I can't. <laughs> so basically, this is really what it comes down to for the two main players in VR today. And if, I, if you asked me six months ago, I'd give you a completely different slide deck when I proposed this. Uh, there's React VR and there's A-Frame. Now, React VR is adopted by Facebook, and that's with the Gear VR and the Oculus set of hardware, like top-down integration. A-Frame is more your Vive, your Google stuff, your Mozilla stuff. More, it's more open, but it's clear that one set of, one set of um, technologies is preferred to the other. They do work together. It is an open standard. Um, and, that's, and React is used by Facebook. That's what they use. A-Frame seems to be used by almost everybody else right now because React VR is really new. And A-Frame, it's three lines to do a uh, 360 panorama image, which, I mean, those are really starting to gain traction, such as this thing. Like this Ricoh Theta camera. Uh, it's cool if I take a picture here, right? OK. So I can just take this image, and I can throw it into my gallery app. OK, this, oh, the image, right? OK. I might be doing a video. We'll find out later. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's, let's really talk about what, how does this actually tie back into Cordova. Cordova and WebVR. So app stores. So you have your web, so you have your uh, mobile web experience and it's on a mobile website. You have to basically battle to get people to go to your mobile website. And if it's a VR experience, you have to hope that they have, you know, that you have a decent discoverable URL. And that's not super long. And you have to make sure that HTTPS is set up. And you have to do all this sort of stuff. And you're not actually shipping an app. And you have to, um, the thing is, we have to figure out how to, that's the next problem, is we have to figure out how we're going to actually get WebVR as apps into the Gear VR store or the, or the Google Play store. We, might, we may be able to do it. We may not ever be able to do it. But that's our next challenge, in my opinion, is how do we, how do we keep PhoneGap going and how do we uh, tackle this problem? Um, Android WebView versus Chromium. Oh, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, who here has used Crosswalk in the past? Who here is upset that Crosswalk is now dead? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's, I love Crosswalk, um, but we're not in the future yet. There's a lot of really old devices still. And we still need a third-party WebView. Uh, there's still value in embedding a browser. Um, the thing with the Chromium is that when you load up Chrome, that's all of Chrome. So WebVR's view and custom copy-paste stuff and all those features that are in Chrome aren't guaranteed to be in Blink. And Blink is what we're embedding in Cordova. So 
we have to actually build a lot of the stuff in there from scratch, which is actually really important. So web VR for us, we may have to actually build that from scratch as well, which is something to be considered. But we have the polyfill, and that's good because sometimes, because this is bleeding edge, the polyfill works faster than native web VR. And iOS support, well, there's no iOS support right now for web VR. It doesn't exist. Um, so it's all about the web VR polyfill, entirely. Um, iOS apps are basically like all the cardboard apps are just standalone cardboard apps. Uh, there is really no distinction between a web iOS cardboard app and like a Unity iOS cardboard app. They all do the same thing. So as I said, all is not lost. We're not going to give up on this. We're going to keep working on this. And I recommend people use the WebVR polyfill and use A-Frame and work on WebVR stuff in Cordova and package apps. It's, it's a perfectly viable solution. And now it's time for the demo. So when I was working this talk, uh, another one of my coworkers talked about a, something from 2013 about WebGL. And when I first looked at it, I saw the WebGL code. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to reuse all that. That's crazy. Like, there's a ton of WebGL code. But I managed to get it working. So, no, not that. So if you can uh, open up your uh, phones and scan that QR code, um, you'll actually, it will actually take you to the, um, to the site that hosts this demo. And I'm actually going to do the same thing on my phone right now. And this is, OK. OK, it brought me there. Now I'm going to click the, now I'm actually going to go in and switch to visor view. Come on, you can do it. Really? Oh, sweet, it's already moving on me. All right, so, okay, so that's there. I'm going to click Enter VR. Really? Are you really? Thanks, Google. Of course, Google I.O. happens, and I'm in Europe, and I'm like, home, hold button. This will probably only take a few seconds. But as you can see, it actually invoked the native v SDK, and now it's making me install this stupid update. So that's using the web API, the web VR API. <laughs> I did test this first. <laughs> I actually did test this. Um, if you have Cardboard installed and you clicked Enter VR, you should be prompting you to actually put this in your headset right now. And you should be following, like that guy. <laughs> All right, uh, awesome, it worked. Okay, so, okay, that's not gonna happen in time. 58%? Yeah, I'm just gonna come back to it. Right, and of course Visor is this thing, where it's, since Visor is a Chrome app, it's like, it wants to, Anyways, let's go back to full screen. There's also the gallery from uh, yesterday, which is, uh, as I said before, this is literally a bunch of 360 photos. And you can select each of these 360 photos, and it'll do a full wraparound. And if you do Enter VR here, it'll just go on a full screen on the desktop. Uh, if you have the VR debugger installed, if you don't, it'll just say VR not found. So this is a pretty basic uh, demo, but this, is, but this is the most common use case for web VR right now, uh, mostly because of modeling. Modeling is hard. You have to have really good modelers, and you have to make sure you get your, your stuff done in Blender, and you have to make sure it's all imported. Um, which is sort of what we did, what I did with um, the floating head demo. All right, so this is 
Okay, I want to escape from here. Let me. Okay. Okay, so that's basically it. Let's go check back on the demo. Uh, let's go check out on Visor. Are we? Oh, we are, we are in. And now it's prompting me to place this into the headset, and this is where I... All right. Let's see if this actually works. Okay. And yeah, I'm in the experience. And it's, and there it goes. So you should see it all weird and stereoscopic. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm seeing. So that's actually a native web VR. <laughs> so again, this is one of these talks where I'm picking a technology that I think has a lot of similarity with the phone gap goals and with the, with the phone gap philosophy. And I just sort of like to acknowledge the Mozilla VR team and uh, Kevin, and Kevin, who basically does a bulk of the work in the docs and the demos for WebVR for making a really awesome project to tie into. And that's it. Do you want to you take some questions? Uh, do we have any questions for Joe? Uh, do, does can you demo, show the oh, demo? Oh, yeah, I can show the demo URL, or do you want the QR code? The URL. You can't see the QR code? Yeah. OK, so the that. OK. Yeah. As I said before, when I was doing the demo, I'm like, wow, this URL is really long. That's the discoverability problem. Any other questions? No? All right, then. Thank you, Joe.